Version control is useful for so many reasons. I use it mostly for syncing projects between computers, for collaborating on projects, and for keeping backups I can easily revert back to. In this video, we'll have a look at how we can set up GitHub and use it with Unity. Now, when it comes to version control, there's a lot of terminology being thrown around, but here's a basic breakdown. Git is an open source version control system. GitHub is a website that makes it easy to host and control projects using Git. When you sign up on GitHub, you can create a repository. A repository is a place where you can store your project. After creating a repository or repo, people can clone it to their computers. That means creating a local version of the project that's sitting on your computer. You can then make changes to the project and commit these changes to the repository on GitHub and everyone will get notified about the change. In order to easily commit changes and pull other people's changes, people either they use a command line interface or a desktop client. This is a touchy subject for many, but for the sake of simplicity, we'll be using GitHub's own client, GitHub Desktop. Finally, there are a few things to think about when using GitHub with Unity specifically. We'll get into those later. All right, enough with that. Let's get started. So first we want to go to github.com. Here we're going to create an account. I already have one, so I'm just going to log in. We then want to hit start a project and here we can create our repository. First, we'll need a name. I'm just going to call this example dash game. GitHub doesn't allow spaces in the repository name. Then we can input a small description. And then you can choose whether or not you want the repository to be visible to the public. Now a free GitHub account doesn't allow you to select private here. Currently you can upgrade for $7 a month, but personally I haven't found a reason to do this yet. I like the idea of the software I'm working on to be public. We can then choose to initialize this repository with a readme. We'll go ahead and check that. And we'll see what this means in a second. We can also choose to add a gitignore file. A gitignore is basically just a text file that allows you to specify some files and folders that you don't want to include in your version control. Here's an example of a gitignore. In here we ignore all files ending in .com, .class, .dll and so on. I always recommend including a gitignore. And that's actually a default one set up for Unity. This will make sure to ignore all of the temporary files that Unity creates. Finally, you can choose to add a license, but we'll just leave that blank. We can then hit create repository. And here's the repository for our example game. You can see we currently only have two files. We have the git ignore file and we have the readme. The readme is a markdown file, which allows us to easily add text to it. And by default, it's displayed on your opening page here. We can actually click on the readme and edit it inside of the browser. So I'll just go ahead and add another line here. If we then scroll to the bottom, you can see that we can now commit this change. By default, it's just going to say update readme, which is fine for me. And we don't need much description on this one. Let's just hit commit changes. And now if we go back to our root folder, we can see it's changed. We can also see that it's now updated here and says two commits. If we click on this, we can see the history of the project. Currently, there's only two versions, the initial one with the default readme and the one we just made with the updated one. You can always click on a commit in order to see what's changed. So now we're ready to clone our project. But to do that, we'll need to install a Git client. If you go to desktop.github.com, GitHub has their own client to use. And this client recently got remade. And so the new version is in beta. However, it seems a lot better than the old one and I haven't had a single issue yet. But in case something doesn't work for you, you can always scroll to the bottom here to download the old version. We'll just hit download for Windows. And yes, there is a Mac version as well. We'll then click on the installer, hit run, and you should now see a GitHub icon on your desktop. Let's double click on it. And the first time you open it up, it will ask you to sign in as well as put in a name and an email that you want to be associated with your commits. I recommend using the same email as your GitHub account. You can always edit this by going to file, options. Here you can sign in to a GitHub account. I'm going to sign in here. And you can also go and do git to fill out your name and mail. Let's save that. And now we have three options. We can create a new repository locally. We can clone an existing one from GitHub, or you can add a local repository that you might have lying around. We'll hit clone repository. And here we need a URL. To get that, we'll simply go into our repository, hit clone or download and copy this URL. I'm just going to hit copy to clipboard and paste it in. We can then choose a path for our project. I'm going to put mine inside of my projects folder. Let's then hit clone. And you should now see that if you open up your folder, your repository will be there. And inside it is our git ignore and our readme. Now we can go ahead and add and edit all files we want inside of this folder. Let's try putting a Unity project in there. So I'll open up Unity. Let's hit new. I'm going to call it example game project. As the location, I'll choose our repository. That's called example game. Let's hit create project. So it's an empty scene. Let's just save that as main. And if we now go to our GitHub client, we can see all the different files that were added to our repo. But before we commit these, we want to set up a few things in Unity. We want to go edit, project settings, editor, 
And here we want to make sure that on the version control we've selected visible meta files. For each asset inside of your project panel, Unity will create a meta file associated with that object. The meta file stores information such as what settings we have on that object and where it's used in our project. We want to make sure that these are visible so they will get picked up by our version control. We'll also go into asset serialization and set that to force text. That will make a lot of the files created by Unity a lot more readable. We now go to our client and before we couldn't preview this file, but now we can see all of the different values that make it up. That's because of the force text attribute. We now want to commit this project, so let's make sure that all of the files are selected. And in the summary, we'll just write add empty project. And before we hit commit to master, there's one more thing we want to fix. You can see how it says 164 changed files here. A lot of these files are actually meta files. And you might think, well, why didn't our git ignore get rid of these? Well, if you ask me, that's according to a mistake in the git ignore file that GitHub sets up for Unity. The reason why is if we go into our project and open up our git ignore, we can see all the files that it tells us to exclude. However, it does this based on the impression that the root of our project will also be the root of the repository. And we've put our project in a subfolder, which I think is just better practice anyways. So to fix that, we can go in and delete all of the slashes in the beginning of the folders here. And if we save that and go into our client, we can see the number of files now have changed to 19. And you can also see the changes we just made to our git ignore. I'll make sure to link you to a better git ignore for Unity in the description. Let's then hit commit to master and voila! We can now go into the history tab to see a new commit. But this commit is only sitting on our computer. Let's make sure to push it to the server. Let's click the push origin button and there we go! If we now visit our repository in the browser, we can see our project has been added. And now we can go on creating our game. And when you've made some changes, simply go back into the client and add a new commit. And of course, make sure to push it. If you make changes to a project on another computer, it will prompt you to pull those. Guess what? You do that using the same button here. That's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a future one. Other than that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in July. And a special thanks to Hans Huftoon, Cole Cabral, Will Goat, Jesper Mikkelsen, Thomas Vorley, Stone Gamer, Cyborg Mummy, Jason Latido, Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, Robert Bund, and Peter Lark. If your name's not on the list, I will make sure to include you in videos later this month and the next month as well. Thanks a lot guys!